Hello, this is Brio of Brioche Productions, Brioche87 on YouTube, the creator of Crossing Bound, and today I'm going to show you how I did it. Well, basically the basics. I'm not going to show you step by step exactly how I made the movie. That would take way too long. But, you know, I'll show you a little hints and pointers and what I basically did. So I'm going to start up um, Swift 3D. I have version 5. You may have version 4.5 or version 6 if you're lucky. But uh, it'll open up just like this and then you'll have all your tools and, you know, all of your cameras and layouts and whatnot. And just pretty much everything's default. Usually the first thing I do is I come down here to the light, which is your lighting for the, basically the scene, and I move this right to here so that way whatever object you have in here is more in vision, and then I take off the shadows and the spectral. Usually that just gets rid of the uh, shadow that is emitted, because if you were just to, use, to leave this here and then do a rendering, it would have two shadows, like there's, you know, two different lights pointed right at it. And um, I usually like to keep it a little more surreal, like it's actually outside or something like that. So there's there's only one shadow. So anyways, I do that, and then I just move this up a little bit. Um, for starters, I'm going to show you how to make a simple character model. And it's not going to be anything special. It's going to be just like the stick figure version of Swift 3D. Um, we'll just call him Blocky. You know, we're not going to do any mesh editing or anything like that. We're just going to compile it together and then start moving his arms around and stuff. So uh, we'll start out with a torso. Let's say a cylinder. So there's Blocky's cylinder torso. Now that's a little bit big, so I'm going to go up here to the scale model tool and then bring it down. You just click and drag, and that just basically makes it go up and down and however big you want it to be. And usually I like to keep this on top, so that way I got a top view of the model itself. And then I'm going to zoom out and just going to hold alt and right click and drag. That zooms the camera out or in if you go the other way. And that's just so I can easily move it around if I need to. Like, you know, if I want to move it over here, there it goes over there and then over here. You just basically usually start out in the center, which over here in the position, it's all zeros or should be. I'll just type that in so it's right back in the same spot. And just make that zero. It could be 0, 0.0. It's still zero no matter what. And then I usually bring down the nudge increment down to 0 0.1, which that just means that when you click on the object and you use the arrow keys, it only moves a little bit instead of a lot. See, if I was to um, have, let's say, a really high nudge increment, it would go a lot further with every keystroke. Like here's one, and that just sends it flying off the screen. So I'll just keep that at point zero one. It's usually easier for me to work with that. Um, it's not very important right now, but usually I keep my um, crossing bound movies at 18 frames per second. Um, the original Mecha Brio was at 24 frames per second, which is pretty much the default for um, all your live action uh, movies and cameras and camera recorders and whatnot um, it usually makes it run smoother but since I'm not really doing too many animations and crossing bound I'm just keeping it at 18. So uh, we got Blocky's torso and we can rename that to torso so that way it doesn't get all confused and if you want you can rename it over here with cylinder and it'll, oh no wait, object, yeah say torso and you can lock it so that way like if you're doing something else and you don't want to accidentally move it because I've done that millions of times it'll lock it or you can hide it so you can't see it at all you know basic simple stuff alright so we got the torso and now we're gonna give him a head we're just gonna use the geosphere and we're gonna resize that so it looks more like a regular head as regular as Blocky's head's gonna be and we'll move that right down to about here now I want to make sure that neck is attached so I'm just zooming in using the alt and the key stro um, mouse strokes just to get zoomed in and positioned right I guess that's fine it looks attached and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna name it Blocky's head and what now what we're gonna do is drag it into the torso so that way there are as one. So now if I was to move it both 
objects would move instead of just the torso moving because if I did this and then I click the torso the torso will just move and not the head so I'll drag that back in there and usually when you do that it automatically groups um, you could actually do it up here too by saying um, let's say we'll separate those again you can click both of them you know do control and uh, wait it's not control it's shift you click the head and then click the torso and then you say arrange group and it'll group the objects together like that you could do it like that or you could just do it with the way I did it with the torso and then we would just call the whole thing as a group which we can actually just do this say blocky we'll just click blocky and it's like hey there we go it's all together okay so we got the head we got the torso uh, let's make them some arms we'll just do uh, wait I don't want to make that big or, well yeah I guess so okay we'll do the torso like that and then we're gonna go over here use the lock spin and we'll set it to 90 degrees and we'll just give it a little right turn so that way it's sticking out like arms and we'll resize it so it's not some big gigantic cylinder and we're gonna want to make it a little bit longer than that so we'll go over here to length and stretch it out now you can do it this way or you can go into scale and then you could do the X Y and Z like for this instance we would say Y and make it larger through the Y but usually I like to keep this all the same so I'll leave that back at point 48 and just do it through the cylinder function once we get into meshes um, you won't be able to do this anymore and you gotta actually do it from the scale but since we're not using a mesh we can do it this way and you can also do the radius a little bit smaller so it looks like more like arms and then we'll rotate that a little bit we'll go back from 90 to 45 degrees you can also just use zero degrees and do it like that but it's not as linear at least in my opinion it's not and I like to keep it a little bit linear and we'll just drag that down make it a little bit less long because he's not that lanky and we're not looking for perf perfection here because it's more like a stick figure thing for Swift so I don't care if that bulge is hanging up like that in his shoulder it doesn't matter we're just showing you the basics okay so we'll do that and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on that and we're gonna say advanced modeler and that'll give us the wireframe what we're gonna do is put the pivot position right at the shoulder so that way when we move the arm it'll move there instead of right there and this is just basically all the camera views but we're gonna want this right here and what you're gonna want to say is position and move independently that way the pivot position and the object won't move at the same time when you move the coordinates now you could take this pivot position and then just uh, okay I guess you can't do that all right well I was gonna say you can just click and drag but I guess you gotta do it this way um, we're gonna move it up see you can see it over here moving upward and then we're gonna move it to the right which we're gonna have to do the x-axis I think yeah and, oops a little too far we'll move it to right about there and then once you have that done put it back to move together and then you can go back to the scene up here and what that did was just make it so that the arms can move and they'll move right there on that axis instead of right here in the middle and now we can just click on that cylinder and hit control C and control V and it'll paste another one right in the exact same spot and what I usually do is I just put on the lock horizontal 90 degrees rotate it and then rotate it and then I just use the arrow keys and move it over to there now he has arms and they're both the same and then I'll just put this back to zero degrees to show you see hi